Now, if you've been paying attention, you've noticed I've taken a few losses on the channel lately. Uh, for example, the Tortuga video, or uh, the bean video, I guess, and then the, the beer review, that was the, that we knew that was gonna do that, which begs the question, is the honeymoon over? Now, I ain't smart, so I figured I'd do something to really kick it into high gear and review a mantis. That'll get people to watch. You know what? Honestly, I am kind of surprised my watch review did a few more than my last two knife videos. And as I'm obligated to, somebody said they couldn't wait for me to complain about the shit views of my beer review. So, uh, I didn't want to let them down. But today we have something, a curiosity. The Hawk Design Mantis Gearhead. Now this one's on loan from Foolish Pride Leather, who made me a leather EDC holder that attaches to the inside of my nutsack. Yeah, I know, it sounds like a sex toy. Now, I don't know if I'll get this done first or that done first, but, uh, you know, uh, seeing as, as of late, let's probably get this one done first. Now, if the viewers know anything about me, uh, you know I love the Hawks. I've got two deadlocks, I got a mud, a mouse pad, at least two shirts. There's the chapsticks, uh, a water bottle, and uh, I did name my firstborn Toad. Oh, like the Animo? Oh, no, no. The toggle operated anti drag. Now, saying all that, I'd still like even more hawks because uh, I, I have a mental defect. And of course, as you know, having a YouTube channel is just one of the many symptoms. Now, hawk knives aren't easy to get, they're out of production designs, often climb in price. So, it's great you can still find this one out there for 99 to 230, depending on the trim. Now, as we look at the dimensions, I don't have to tell you, the viewer, that Grant and Gavin have been making odd knives for years. Now, if you head on over to Arizona Custom Knives, they have a pretty good sampling of the insane prices people have paid for their productions and their customs over the years. And you know what? Looking through that list, I'd even buy a zero tolerance if they re-released the mud. And I'm saying this completely sober. But today we're looking at the Hawk I can buy, you can buy, I can buy your mom, or even gift to your sister. That's right, I'm your new stepdad now. Stop touching my knives and I need you to stay away from the S10, okay? Because I have a high interest loan on that right now and I don't need any scratches on it. Now right now, these are about the only Hawks that are easy to get, I think, other than, yeah, the Quartermaster, General Lee, and the Kershaw Select Fire. Oh, maybe, you know what, maybe there's some others, but I'm just gonna take research and the reply guys do need something to do down there. In fact, uh, one's about to bring up the marksman right now. He's typing it because just the lock counts for an... Uh, actually... But we're going to focus on the gearhead here. First, you have the blade. This one is the fancy, squiggly, uh, let's call it Damascus. According to Mantis's website, there's a full 62 layers of steel and spices producing the squiggles. Now, please don't ask what the steel is. No one knows, and it's an industry secret. You don't want anyone to replicate the squiggles. However, they do make a vanilla drop point that's just 440C. You can find it on Knife Center in case you'd like a steel that's popular in 1997. And I think I'm going to actually buy the base model, that one. But the blade comes in drop points or tantos. Uh, I'm a drop point guy. I don't know if it's an unspoken thing or not, but I don't really review tantos because I don't like them a whole lot. But let's focus on the main thing here, the mechanism. It has a gear and lever-based planetary deployment system. I... I think some of those words in the last sentence were out of order, but what that means though is on a normal knife, you know, a thumb stud or a flipper uh, would have been nice, but the Hawks wanted to give it something extra, as in gears and shit. You give the lever a strong, consistent push, and it deploys the blade. And, you know, when I first deployed it, I didn't think I was doing it correctly, but after a few tries, it's like you know where to place the pressure on the lever to get it to do it. It's not an auto, so don't be confused. You do have to follow through on that press. It's smooth, and yes, all the gears do move. And some people had pointed out that you may get pocket lint or perhaps dog shit or bubble gum stuck inside those gears, and I appreciate that observation. That's possible. Well, uh, that just don't really look practical now, does it? Y yes, I know your collection of 47 practical knives is practical. And of course, here are the practical ones I never use that I keep locked away because I pay too much for them. There's nothing about this hobby that's practical, okay? Buy what you like. Now, if anyone knows or understands where I am as a knife person, I am long past the practicality in my collecting phase. Now, I'm not sure where I was going with that, but the liner lock is a bit of an odd placement because it's right in the area. You give it a tight squeeze if you were bearing down or, you know, just letting it know you care. My knives are like my children to me. Now, that said, it's best to treat it like a slip joint. Just a little bit of squeeze and you release that lock, you know. Of course, if you're 
downward pushes through things, you're not going to worry about that because the the thing that you're pushing through is going to push up and the blade is going to... That's that's how people use non-locking knives, okay? Just, just as a tip. If it doesn't lock, it's dangerous. Now the handle is kind of sandwiched together with layers. You have uh, external carbon fiber layers on the lock side. And then on the show side, it seems a little more like a faux carbon fiber checkered printed FRN or nylon or I don't know, something. And uh, you'll see backspacers and uh, more liners. How many liners are we looking at here? Not quite sure. You'll notice the ring, as they call it in product description, says brass or copper colored. Now that's uh, probably kind of accurate. To me, it's either a painted stainless steel or an analyzed, analyzed, <laughs> or an anodized aluminum. I feel like anodized aluminum is probably the most, uh, you know, academically correct here. I think that's probably what it is. So as I, you can see, the handle is odd but comfortable. It's a contraption knife. I'd rank it as a light everyday carry or a desk fidget toy. Now the pocket clip isn't deep carry, but it's very functional and clips to the pocket nicely. Painted stainless steel, I reckon. Tip up, blade backward in the right pocket, and it is not repositionable for the gross left-handed people out there. That'll teach them some humility. Comparisons. First, the gearhead. Now I don't own any Mantis knives, never reviewed them before, but the materials and fit and finish remind me of a Kershaw. Kershaw? Kershaw. Now some overall impressions as to what I like and what I don't like. I tend to like less busy blades, so Damascus, it's you, not me. This knife here is unusual, and I won't pass on having one for the collection. It won't be my favorite hawk, but it's a, you know, I appreciate it. And you know what? I don't even know how long they'll be made, so so uh, what I'll tell myself is this knife is an investment. It reminds me a little of the handle profile of the mud seen here, which is a favorite of mine, which I, I did take hiking the other day. It's a great story. It's the end of the story, too. The mud was my first hawk knife from a few years back. It's a shame they don't make these anymore, and, and the reason is not so I can flip it to some sorry-ass chump. The mud is a nicer knife, more functional, more comfortable in the hand, a strong lockup, better fit and finish, and I'll never sell it. And I say this because I get asked a few times a year, would you like to sell the mud? No, I won't. Now let's look at another, uh, I don't know, contraption knife, but one that I use often. I think uh, the AD-15 is probably my most used cold steel. It has a unique locking mechanism, but it's also very practical, you know, for a weekend or a larger carry when you're not at the uh, office, which, um, am I an office guy? This is called the Scorpion Lock, right? And yeah, uh, It's been a long week, okay? But I like it. Uh, it has some aftermarket scales on it. Now the deadlock. This knife isn't comparable other than the same designers, you know, made the gearhead. I, I just wanted to put the deadlock in here. Fit and finish and quality on the deadlocks and mud is next level. Now these are the mainline Hawks, the ones that are branded Hawk. They're legendary and everyone loves them, no exceptions. Also permanent fixtures in my collection. Now my opinion is, and because no one asked me for advice, it's extra important, I wish the Hawks would make the MUDs, the Orbit, and the Deadlocks all, you know, at the same time. All someone needs to do though is build them three times the space, pay the extra employees, and buy the machines for them, and then all the logistics are worked out. Very easy to do. I kind of like both Deadlocks, but I am bummed that I never got the chance and stole the money to buy a full titanium Model B. The Model C is killer though, and how about that new batch with the titanium inlays? Real hot shit. Anyway, thanks to Foolish Pride Leather for letting me try this out. Now if you're familiar at all with the channel, and to be honest, you'd have a much richer, interesting life if you weren't, this knife might remind you of the wild steer I reviewed. And you might muse, well, didn't you hate that fucker, you hypocritical son of a bitch? I hope you lose your job and get hit by a bus. Of course, I'd have to say that in French because only weird French guys were mad that I didn't like that knife. I guess my main problem with that one is it marketed itself as a hard as shit essential survival tool, like something you would just go out and just survive in the wilderness with if you were an archer, okay? And the, and the Mantis, on the other hand, is just an interesting pocket knife with a, a weird mechanism. Without the pretense and the explainer videos and the accessory pouches and the hardcore lifestyle that goes along with it. But it is also a Mantis. And as many had pointed out, a steer is a cow with its balls cut off. Which, uh, of course, you're going to have to find a, a way to make the metaphor work, viewer, okay? Anyway, I believe Matt bought this from the Hawks. And the one oddity here is that you can get this knife at Knife Center or, or several other places. I just say Knife Center because it's the first one that comes up in the search. But the carbon fiber gear panel here cover seems to be unique so far on the Hawks drop. I don't know if this is a revision. I don't know if it was exclusive to the Hawks. It's just this little section right up here. And that's the only difference I see. It's just really cosmetic anyway. Anyway, I'll probably buy the $100 version from Knife Center, a little more 
plain is fine for me than the gussied up uh, Damascus 11 herbs and spices version. So follow Foolish Pride Leather on Instagram. Check out his shop. He sells things and makes things. I don't make anything. He has handmade wallets and keychains. You know, remember, buy from small makers and not department stores if you're buying stuff like that. Anyway, say hi to the patrons. Their contributions are financing my new 4K camera and iMac that finally allows me a 4K workflow so I can make Mantis knife reviews that don't get any views. So like, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching.